This is the joint work with my colleagues, Ramin, my advisor, Amir, uh, Denise, and Don. Um, as you know, um, instant messaging applications, or IMs, have been so popular in um, recent years such that over two billion people are using them around the world. And these uh, IMs enable uh, users to exchange various types of messages, um, like um, video, audio, image, uh, uh, text messages, and etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, there are a uh, the huge variety of these IM services, but um, most of them have um, the centralized structure, which means that all of the communications are relayed through uh, the IM provider servers, as you can see in the figure. Um, and also, uh, they have various types of communication. Um, and three important ones are one-to-one -one communication, where just two people are communicating with, communicating with each other, uh, group communication, where a group of people are communicating with each other, and um, there is a, a concept of channel communication in which um, uh, there can be an infinite number of members, uh, but members can only observe the, con uh, the communication, and there are a few number of admins, and the admins have the privilege to post uh, and upload messages on, um, on the communication. Um, but um, besides the normal use of these um, IM applications, they are extensively used to uh, exchange uh, politically and uh, socially sensitive contents. And therefore, this makes them um, very at attractive targets for um, government and corporation surveillance. Uh, uh, as a consequence of this uh, issue, I can give you two recent examples. Uh, one of them is uh, arresting um, the admin um, of uh, politically sensitive channels in Iran, or um, the other one uh, is some unconfirmed uh, reports about that uh, the government of China uh, attempt to disclose the identity of Hong Kong protesters by misusing one of their um, uh, one of the Telegram features. Um, so. Uh, but uh, now the important question is that, is that how confidential are these IMs? Um, the good news is that uh, the content is protected by encryption, um, either uh, end to middle encryption or end to end encryption. But the bad news is that um, these traffic patterns uh, can still leak information. And um, to show you uh, how uh, they can leak information, I will give you a very simple example. So assume that uh, an admin of a, a communication of a channel is sending um, a different a sequence of different type of messages into a, a channel, and there are members who are receiving these messages. Uh, uh, you can see that all of these messages with various types appears similar on the traffic shape, and they appear as bursts of packets. And um, uh, if someone uh, sees uh, any two of these traffic patterns, um, he can um, say that they are, uh, they are coming from the same sequence of messages. So uh, this leakage, and, uh, leakage of information leads, leads us to this work uh, where uh, the object of, of our study is to investigate the a threat of traffic analysis to popular uh, IM uh, services. And um, note that this is not a bug or in their software or a flaw in their implementation. This is a fundamental vulnerability. And uh, the main reason is that these um, uh, IM services do not obfuscate their traffic patterns because it's uh, expensive for them. Um, so now let me introduce our traffic analysis attack to you. Our attack has an uh, adversary which is, uh, who is a surveillance organization, and this adversary does not need any cooperation with the IAM provider itself. And uh, the goal of the adversary is to uh, identify the participant, uh, like the admins, the members of a, a target IAM communication. And um, the adversary, as I um, said, uses um, traffic analysis and uses timing and sizes of the messages to uh, perform traffic analysis. Um, so uh, in our attack scenario, we assume that uh, uh, we, have an, uh, we have a surveillance area in which there are some users who are communicating through, this, uh, uh, through an IM server. And then um, uh, a channel starts to uh, post sensitive, um, uh, sensitive content. And then, um, um, so now the adversary wants to find uh, who is posting to this channel and who, who, is, who is the member of this channel that can observe these posts. So uh, 
the adversary start to wiretap um, starts to wiretap uh, a target user, the traffic of a target user, and then the, uh, the adversary uh, can join, um, I mean, the adversary join um, the, the, this target communication to find some uh, ground through traffic to perform traffic analysis. And um, uh, the ground route of this adversary uh, can have uh, three different possibilities. The first one is that the adversary can join that target communication, but uh, she can only uh, be a member and just observe the traffic. The next one is that the adversary uh, have posting privilege and uh, can um, send data as well as just observing the data. And in the worst case, the adversary cannot um, join that communication, but he, um, he can wire, she can wire taps an identified member or admin in a, in a one-to-one -one communication. And uh, our, our target user uh, also can be the admin or it, uh, he can be the member of a, uh, a target communication. Um, so this is the outline of the work. Um, first, we, we model the, the regular IM communications. And then um, we design attack algorithms to perform traffic analysis. And um, then we, uh, I'm going to talk about the experiments that we perform. And at the end, um, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, introduce some uh, countermeasures that we, uh, we investigate for uh, defending our attack. So now let's uh, go for the uh, modeling IM traffic. So um, we, establish an, uh, we establish a statistical model um, um, uh, for regular IM traffic to first derive uh, theoretical bounds uh, on our um, traffic analysis attack, and second, to uh, generate synthetic IM communication and uh, uh, get more data to extend our analysis. Um, to, to obtain that model, uh, we use uh, traffic patterns of 1,000 telegram channels, uh, each for 20 hours. And by patterns, I mean just sizes and timing and types of the messages. And uh, we model the following features of the uh, of a IM uh, communication. For message types, we uh, use a Markov model to um, find the transition probabilities between these message types. And for the other three one, the intermessage uh, delays, message sizes, and the communication latency, we just uh, uh, obtain the uh, the empirical distribution of them. Uh, then, uh, when we have the model, uh, we uh, use hypothesis testing to uh, design um, attack algorithms. Um, in this work, we designed two attack algorithms, uh, the event-based algorithm and shape-based algorithm. The event-based algorithm is based on um, our statistical model. Um, and um, how it works is um, as follows. Uh, as I uh, mentioned, the adversary can obtain the uh, traffic of both the target user and a target communication. So in event-based um, algorithm, um, um, the adversary extracts the burst of packets, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, which are the, actually the messages that appears as a burst of packets in the traffic. Uh, the adversary extracts these burst of packets, and we call them events. And then um, the adversary search uh, in, in these two sequence of events, the adversary search for two events that are close enough. And by close, I mean in terms of the timing of these uh, events and the total volume of, of these events. And if uh, the adversary find um, a too close um, event, uh, uh, she call it the match. And to uh, find a uh, metric and correlation amount uh, for, uh, for this attack, uh, we uh, calculate the number of matches to, to the number of events as the correlation amount. And then the adversary can compare this um, correlation to a threshold to make decisions. Um, the next, uh, and uh, we did um, hypothesis testing you know, to uh, find the theoretical bounds for this um, attack. But uh, because of the time, I'm going to skip this. You can find more details about the uh, mathematics in the paper. Also, I'm going to skip the um, shape-based algorithm, and you can find more details in the paper, too. Uh, uh, after uh, designing our um, uh, attack algorithms, we uh, perform experiments on Telegram, WhatsApp, and Signal, the three popular uh, IM applications. Um, so. Uh, uh, here, I'm just going to show the results of the experiments that uh, performed on Telegram. 
For doing that experiment, um, we used uh, patterns of 500 channels, and we considered two scenarios. First is uh, identifying uh, the admin of a Telegram channel, and the second one is uh, wiretapping an identified user in a one-to-one -one communication. Um, uh, let me show you now. Uh, let me show you the um, performance of the uh, uh, performance of both algorithms. These two uh, uh, figures shows the ROC curves of these algorithms uh, for event-based and shape-based um, for the first scenario where we want to find the admin of a Telegram channel, and uh, we can see that. Um, even using 15 minutes of traffic, observed traffic, we can uh, the adversary can achieve 94% uh, of confidence, uh, while uh, the uh, false positive rate is as small as 10 to the minus three. Um, so uh, one question is that uh, now that the deep learning is the most powerful tool to perform traffic analysis, why we why we didn't use that? Um, the point is that we. We compared our work with DeepCore, which is the state-of-the-art um, uh, deep learning-based traffic analysis um, on Tor, which is uh, designed for Tor. We compare our work with uh, DeepCore, and uh, we see that, for, uh, uh, especially for a smaller false positive, we even perform better than uh, DeepCore. And uh, we found out that the reason, um, we, we have two reasons for that. First one is uh, uh, that uh, uh, Deep Core is designed to uh, perform traffic analysis using the intermessage, uh, interpacket delays and sizes. But here we use uh, intermessage uh, delays, and then, then therefore Deep Core doesn't have that much data in a small length of traffic to uh, uh, get good uh, accuracy. And uh, the uh, the next thing is that um, comparing to the Tor environment, the uh, traffic of the uh, messaging applications are not that much noisy, and, um, um, and uh, but DeepCore is designed to perform traffic analysis on a more noisy environment like Tor. And the uh, last uh, thing is um, um, we, uh, we, we, pro we propose, uh, uh, we design and implement and propose an open source countermeasure system called uh, IM proxy. But before that, um, one trivial way might be just uh, using um, circumvention systems like Tor or VPN and just tunneling the traffic of the instant messaging applications through these circumvention systems. We did that uh, for our event-based detector, and um, we saw that uh, still um, it, just tunneling um, the traffic of the, uh, the traffic of these applications through this circumvention system is not effective, and still the adversary can achieve higher confidence um, uh, uh, by tunneling uh, while, the, while the traffic uh, is tunneling through these circumvention systems. So we move to IAM proxy. IAM proxy is a proxy-based obfuscation system um, and um, uh, designed to obfuscate the traffic of uh, traffic patterns of instant messaging applications. It does not need any cooperation um, uh, with the uh, instant messaging provider, and it can be easily deployed by users by just installing a local proxy on their local machine. Uh, IAM proxy uses two algorithms uh, to obfuscate the traffic. First is just uh, adding delays to change the um, timing of the messages. And the next one, just adding uh, dummy packets to change the sizes of the messages. And it has two main parts. Uh, one local proxy, which is a, a, a proxy which is installed in the local machine of the users. And a remote proxy, which is in an uh, area which is not observable by the adversary. Now, uh, let me show you how it works. So, in this figure, we can see the uh, conventional um, uh, scenario of our uh, traffic analysis attack uh, in which the adversary can observe the traffic of the sender and the receiver. Um, IAM proxy um, acts differently on downstream and, and uh, upstream traffic. In the upstream traffic, for example, an admin is sending something to the channel. Um, and the local proxy of the admin will uh, pad packets to the uh, to pad uh, packets to the messages of the uh, uh, of the admin and uh, change the sizes of the uh, uh, messages. And then um, the remote proxy, which is in an area uh, and this area is not observable by the adversary, remove these padded packets. And then in the downstream traffic, again the the remote proxy. 
uh, add, add dummy packets to change the sizes, and then add delays uh, to change the timing of the events. And, um, and then uh, the local proxy of the receiver will uh, remove that, those padded packets and receive the delayed version of the messages. So in this case, um, uh, the adversary observes the both uh, modified versions of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the traffic patterns, um, and we evaluate our IM proxy. We use Laplacian distribution to add the delays, and we add dummy packets based on a uniform distribution. We use SOX5 proxy for both of these proxy, and, um, and these two figures shows the ROC curve of just adding delay, uh, the left one, and just adding uh, dummy packets for the right one uh, while using IAM proxy. And we can see that with just 10% bandwidth overhead, we have a 30% decrease in the confidence of the adversary. And as a um, conclusion, um, in this work, we show that despite the use of advanced encryption algorithms, uh, IAM application still leaks information about the activity of their users, and um, this is uh, because they do not use any obfuscation algorithms uh, because it's expensive for them. And we hope that our results and our work warn the IAM providers to take proper measures. Thank you. Uh, this is Zhongjie from UC Riverside. It's a very interesting talk. Uh, so uh, what do you think is the reason that uh, package size and the timing could uh, leak user identity? Um, I think I show you in one slide because um, the, the shape of the traffic is um, similar for uh, when, when, when users and senders or receivers are sending uh, uh, same messages and receiving same messages, the pattern of the traffic is the same because um, they appear as um, a burst of packets with MTU size and uh, they have this, and they obviously have the same size and they have just uh, uh, network delay so uh, the adversary can uh, easily you know uh, match these um, sizes and timings to uh, match these users with their uh, communication so you mean different users have their traffic uh, have different uh, latencies you mean? Uh, dif different shape you no, no no I mean uh, no, different users doesn't have different shapes I mean uh, if we send a, a same sequence of message for example to a channel all of the members uh, will receive the same shape of the traffic, but maybe with different uh, delays. But that delays, you know, can be uh, 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 neglected by the adversary, you know, just to just by increasing his, uh, her offset, you know, to perform the matching. Okay, thank you. Sure. Hi, uh, Ram from the University of Michigan. Great talk. Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering if in your, when you're building your IM model, did you consider like that any of the users would not have an internet connection at all? And like, would that add a natural kind of latency that would kind of add as a countermeasure to the adversary? You mean users not having connection to the internet? Yeah, like some, like in a group, let's say some users don't have an internet connection. Yeah, so. because um, uh, the length of our observed traffic is very small, we assume that in one of these periods, you know, the users are online and seeing and observing those messages. So uh, we can assure that, you know, in one of these uh, periods, you know, uh, both the sender and receivers are uh, interactive and they are receiving and sending those messages. Thank you. Sure. Uh, quick question. So are you suggesting from your work that um, encryption is not as effective as obfuscation based on the measurements you've done? Oh, I'm not saying it's not as effective. I'm saying um, obf uh, obfuscation is needed as well. Okay, so encryption does not provide enough obfuscation. Yes. And the other question, well, I tend to disagree. Regardless, the other question is when you say that there is a uh, uh, so, somebody that can eavesdrop or monitor the, the traffic patterns, where is that attacker sitting? Is it like a Wi-Fi connection or somewhere else? I think it's more bigger, for example, an ISP or government or... Uh, so the assumption is that the ISP has been compromised? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, then it's game over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>